This video is all about the new Face Liquify feature that's in the latest version of Photoshop CC. The Face Liquify slider controls can be used to manipulate people's faces, targeting specific features to improve or abuse as you wish. In this video, you will learn how to find and use the Face Liquify controls, how to work with the various sliders to manipulate facial features, and some of the ways in which the Face Liquify feature can prove useful in a professional context. To begin with, let me take this photograph that was uh, shot of myself and show you how we can use Face Liquify here to change the shape of my face. You will notice here that I have the image converted into a smart filter or into a smart object layer. And this means that any of the Liquify filter adjustments that I apply to this image will remain always editable. To apply the Liquify filter, if I go to the filter menu, I can choose Liquify. And this opens up the Liquify dialog where you can see that uh, the face has already been detected. And you can see this is the case by these two curved white lines that appear either side of the face. And over here on the left, you can see that the face tool is selected. Now, if there happens to be more than one person in an image, then you'll see curved white lines besides each uh, face. And then over here in the face uh, liquify controls, you can see that there's a select face menu. And if there's more than one face, then you can choose which is the one that you wish to target and uh, work with. The controls for doing that are down, are down here on the right. You can see that you've got slider controls for each of these facial attributes, or you can move the cursor over the face. And you can see that as you do so, the overlays appear, which allow you to drag and control different attributes. So for example, here I can change the face shape by clicking and dragging left and right. Down here, I can adjust the chin height by dragging on that. Here are controls for the mouth. I can control the shape of the mouth to make it go from a frown to a smile. Here are controls for the nose and then also for the eyes so that I can drag on this handle here to make the eyes go bigger or smaller. And if you move the cursor away, then you see it changes to a double arrow icon. And this allows you to click, for example, here on the cheek so that you can manipulate the shape of that. Or perhaps I could move down here and I could click and drag to change the shape of the chin so that you have those additional controls that you can work with. And then, of course, also you have still all these slider controls over here that are on the right. So where this might be useful, I think perhaps wedding photographers where you have a group of people and not everybody is uh, smiling to the camera at the same time and you've just got one person who's not looking quite right, then you can select their face out, apply a few adjustments and very quickly get to an idealized result. But another usage I can think of is also working with uh, lookalike models. So that's going to be my next demo. Let me cancel out of that and then select the other image that I have here, which is a photograph that was shot for Amateur Photographer magazine by a photographer called Andrew Sydenham. And the idea here was to take a photograph of a model to make her look more like a famous pose uh, of Marilyn Monroe. And for this, the photographer hired in the model, who was a good lookalike, uh, a hairdresser, makeup artist and a clothes stylist to go and achieve the complete look here. And the end result is pretty good, I think. It worked really well as a, as a cover shot and all those elements came together. But there are limits as to how much you can make somebody look like somebody else. So in this instance, I think that working with the face liquify controls, it would be possible to fine tune this image to make the model look even more Marilyn like. So again, checking over here in the layers panel, you can see that I've got the image converted into a smart object or smart filter layer. And again, I want to go to the filter menu and choose liquify to open up the liquify dialog. And if I zoom in here again, let's just look at the face close up so we can see it more clearly as I make these adjustments. And what I'm going to do is go through these individually one at a time to apply what I think are the right adjustments to be able to make the model look more like Marilyn. So I've increased the uh, eye size here. I'm going to decrease the eye height slightly with the eye width take that up a little bit there and tilt the eyes just very slightly by applying a small negative uh, value and then just widen the distance for the eyes. With the nose height, 
Let me just make the nose smaller there by applying a positive value and um, just increase the, uh, sorry, and then just increase the nose width just a little bit. I'm going to leave the smile as it is, but with the upper lip, let me increase that up a little bit and uh, apply a negative value for the lower lip. With the mouth width, I'll leave that as it is and then just increase the mouth height. For the overall face shape, I think the forehead needs to go up quite a lot. So I'm going to take that up really high. With the uh, chin height, let me just take that down to a negative value. With the jawline, also apply a negative value to that. And lastly, with the face width, let me just take that right up to 100. So I think that those settings that I've applied there with the sliders have already done a fair amount to make the model look more like Marilyn. But there are a couple of other features there which need a little bit of enhancement. So if I select the regular tools now, I'll select the forward warp tool. I want to even out the top shape of the lip here because Marilyn's lip shape is more like this rather than the model's original uh, lips. And with the uh, eyebrows, uh, Marilyn's eyebrows tend to be, had a kind of like a more of an arched shape to them. So if I just fine tune the adjustment there for the, uh, for the eyebrow, I can lift that up a little bit to make that look a little bit more similar. So those are the main adjustments that I've applied there. Let me click OK to apply that to the image and you can see that they've now been applied. And if I want to compare the after effect here with the before, I can just toggle on the liquify eye icon and you can see that's the before version and that's the after using the face liquify plus the other modifications that I made using the liquify filter. This Photoshop video tutorial was brought to you by me, Martin Evening, author of the Photoshop for Photographers series of books. You can find out more at the book's website or follow me on my Photoshop and Photography Facebook page.